but it is nice like the ulti sets up for the ice bar sets up for the nick stun as well so i don't hate it but i feel like grimshirk can probably go like grimshirk might like be able to ags this game into the naga because any illusions here is really stat go bunch of stats and you know, he's gonna have the fusil blade as well so the dark portrait's gonna do a lot of work if he does get the ags it can also be the five grim as well and uh, fy they pc ogd one of the few teams i see play the shadow team a lot on the four i like that that's a great pick it is into aa which is the one thing i question but it's the fact that nag is going to come online slow like elk should be able to hit the timing well both these heroes are slow elk and naga but elk if he he should hit that timing a little bit faster than what the naga will and then once you hit that timing they have to run with it because going late game might favor sparking considering they do have that aa counter to the alchemist which late game is going to be a big issue so they can probably end this game with like radiance bkb and they might just be far enough ahead they need like another hero like i wouldn't mind like elk's a win condition here they need another hero that i think is pretty mobile to get on top of the aa like if you can kind of put pressure on this hero and make it difficult to be able to get the ice blast onto the elk that's just going to increase his potential to cause havoc across the map we're seeing elk get ramped up as well like he's getting played a lot the only issue with alchemist is that if you go into lineups that are super fast then you can just take objectives and then he just loses the map control and but he but he's that hero that yeah like first kind of 13 minutes he doesn't do anything but then like all of a sudden he just comes online and like can end the game so fast so i don't mind him we're, we're gonna see like pc ogd have a decent way to be able to pressure out the bounties as well which is nice that is the one good thing about the alchemist is that you have decent way to protect the towers with the pango grimstroke and now he's also like Whenever you have an alchemist in the game, it's nice because you know there's always going to be fights around the bounties. You're always going to get a little bit of action there, but... Do they want to give it to Chalice or is this a Somnus Elk? Um... You have some flexibility there in that regard. I think it's going to be played mid though. Oh, go for like... Can they Ricky actually? From LGD, go Ricky Grimstroke, put Shadow Demon on four. Okay, so they, they'll they get the classic Somnus Conquer, which is just game winning stuff. Somnus is Conquer, like, I wonder what his win rate is on actually on that hero. Like, I feel like I've never seen him lose on Conquer. I know that's probably a <laughs> little bit of an overstatement, but he's got an incredible Conquer. And that's also a really good pick. I brought it up last game. When you have ninth pick and you're looking for your mid hero. Conk is kind of one of the best because he doesn't lose a lot of matchups. They might like raise a here potentially on sparking. The Nog is a really nice way to be able to enable the Razor. It's a good matchup versus the Conk. Oh, kind of good against the Elk as well. They don't have the greatest way to kite the Razor. Well, Purge is a little annoying, I, sh I must say, from the Shadow Demon. Uh, I'm trying to think of... What what do they need? Well, they need some playmaking hero for the Naga. Someone needs to come online early. So you add pressure towers. I mean, they have the DK. Actually, hang on. What? Are, actually, no. They're looking for a three, right? Because they're going to put the DK mid. Uh, you can DK three and give it to OP. Well, if they're looking for the off lane. Is Centaur banned? I guess you have the Dragonite to be able to take objectives. I wouldn't mind another hero that's able to have kind of some magic burst. So maybe if you do put the DK on the three. Okay. Your hero. That's not magic burst, but it's a hero that's able to come online at a good timing. I'm actually a little worried with this Hoskull pick. But is it greedy? Let's see. I'll put the Chalice safely, and Chalice is going to get a lot of farm in that matchup. Well, that, yeah, that is another, uh, the Razor and Husker are one of the, the key ones that stand out against the Conquer. 
They can't put anyone else mid as well, I don't think. I don't think old 11 can go mid. Um, I mean, Somnus goes Spirit Vessel, and if Elk has a good game, then I think they win. All they need is a Spirit Vessel at a decent timing when Elk's able to kind of come online. That That's really the timing from LGD. I think Conker, ha Conker has to go Spirit Vessel or they don't win this game. Because I can't see, like, Pango doesn't want to go for it. Pango probably goes Vlad's. Shadow Demon and Grimm aren't going to go for it either. Husker level 1 though of man fighting is pretty weak. Like he's not very good at being able to fight around the runes. So yeah. I, this is this is tricky. You know, there's always a team that I'd favor late game, and then, then there's always a team that I'd favor early. And I said last game. Like anyone that has the early game, I usually are favoring at the moment just because of how games are tra kind of transitioning with the meta. But prepare for battle. Hmm. Radiant have yeah, they also have the Hoskar on Radiant, which I think is important. That Roche control. They're gonna smoke up once again straight away. I don't think they have as much kill threat as what they did last game, but maybe just getting some some deep wards again. Getting outside the base kind of fast as well. See they'll trade vision across the mid. Alright, who do I favor? I think the This is always tricky. I think the Radiant lineup is... I don't say easier to execute. Like, the Nog is going to be pretty slow. Like, they just... I feel like PSG OGD actually do have kind of a difficult draft to execute. In this regard, because the Alchemist, if you don't hit this big timing, then I don't actually think they can deal with the Illusions too well. Like, Elk's going to have Rad... Conk is not going to have a good game. Like, he has to go more utility this game. And I don't think Pango can go Maelstrom either. Maybe. Like, he'll probably have a decent lane, so maybe he can go Maelstrom, but a lot of time I see Pango is prioritizing the Vlads. This is interesting. Uh, I, I, think, I think they're going to tie it up. I think they're going to tie it up. I like the lanes. At least I like the mid matchup, which I think is really important. That's really nicely done as well. <laughs> That's done off the mark. They knew there wasn't a ward down bot. And because Radiant got the their Observe Ward out early, they had a good understanding that they didn't go across the river to place an aggressive one. Unless they would have smoked. So it's literally just 50-50. Kind of surprised he put it there instead of in the river. But... And next over is just going to kind of hang around mid. Give him a decent start. Didi doesn't have the Burning Spears. We see this kind of uh, often right now. Is that the the Hoskas don't go burning spears at, at level one? You're just unable to kind of the the harass early isn't too much, and the attack speed's a lot better to be able to just constantly right click. I've seen also Hoskas go for like a two zero three no one zero two I should say sorry. Uh, how many stacks? That's four. If X never finds a fifth here, unfortunately won't connect on it. I don't not uh, yeah I don't think Felix would have died with that extra stack as well, but. So yeah, I see sometimes the the one zero two, the point in the inner fire just allows you to secure your range creep CS. But now with the burning spears, Somnus is he's going to be under threat. Like they they leave this mid matchup. Who got the bounties as well? So there was not a lot of emphasis on the bounties. There was a two for two. We didn't see many uh, a lot of fight over it. Look like both of you were trying to de ward that the uh, the ward mid, but Felix actually just going to go back to base. So this is actually really important. The fact that the one... Oh, this is actually something I have not thought about. They have the Shadow Demon with the Alchemist. Shadow Demon's very good at stacking. This this spot, you can always double stack anyway. You don't need the poison, but... You know, Shadow Demon, a lot of time, can find like three stacks, Somnus. So this is the shenanigans we've, we're starting to see a little bit more on the mid lane matchups. When you really struggle... You know, against like a Razor, against any lane dominating hero. You know, Somnus is probably going to die. Can't just TPR, he's going to try and kill as many creeps as possible. And he's stacking up the wave as well, which is the important thing. Felix is going to make sure he holds onto the stun. 
kind of i hope he doesn't keep hitting the creeps because otherwise it's just going to go into night range and once he dies here like felix will just end up tonight yeah he's gonna get a couple denies here so they're able to find first blood very nicely done from felix it will now like i mean he's gonna have like a creep wave and a half but yeah see look what he missed there two melee creeps got denied he missed the range creep as well so I'm fine with him dying. I know I know he's gonna die there, but I, I think you shouldn't be spamming out Torrent and Tidebring on the Crete Wave. He just got another re mm. I mean, this is definitely a matchup that's not supposed to go your your way, but I think he's yeah, playing it a little tricky as well. Take a look. So this the lane's really good for SAG at the moment. I mean Naga free farming down bot. There's a hero that doesn't really put too much pressure on the lanes. The, the really important thing is that I like what Felix is doing. They know they, I mean, a, a Dragonite and a Nyx, I don't think pressures out the Alchemist. Instead, Felix is going to keep kind of tabs on what Shadow Demon is doing, making stacks in the jungle. We'll probably see him get a, a deep ward down. They do actually scout him out right now. I love the defensive ward. Dyer's curry has been so they're going to see him come back without any vision. So that, that's an easy D ward for them. Oh, actually, down bot, mod 11. I think Swell will be able to secure the kill onto the Ancient Apparition here, so nicely done. God King's going to take a decent chunk of damage as well. Did you get that Ancient stack too? So, the only issue is is that Somnus doesn't have kind of the levels at the moment. Once you get more points in Tidebringer, you are, you are able to farm up the jungle relatively well, but until then, you're going to suffer. So you see, it's just actually... Uh, Felix? He's got Tranks. He moves really fast, but not going to be able to find that kill. So yeah, he's just getting whatever he can. I, I'd really like to see his support go mid, but that's the issue. Like, it looks like Shadow Demon's really on stack duty at the moment. But he can go, he can soak up mid and then go back to the jungle. Because Nyx, oh, actually, but Red Panda. Naga is doing a lot of damage. FY is trying to man fight with this, but Gold King with the minus armor finds the kill. And on the back line as well, old 11. Does have the swashbuckle. Gets a couple more lucky shot procs. Felix has got to be careful here without a stick. And oh, old 11 doesn't even try and swashbuckle away. So they're going to lose. Uh, uh, they might lose all four bounties here, guys. That is actually really important. OP's got a stun as well. That That is... Well, that's not good. That's really not good. <laughs> Far out. And now DD's got a DD. So he's just going to chase down Somnus here. I'd be able to get a couple last hits in the meantime as well, <laughs> but... Ooh, if that is... I mean, a lot of time you see teams will try and put pressure on the map as soon as the bounty is about to come up, because if they don't find the kills, at least they bring them low enough so they can't contest the bounties, but you just see SAG, they actually find two kills instead of even, you know, uh, doing enough damage to force them away, so... Uh, 3,000 net worth lead for the boys on Radiant, and... I mean, they have prioritized a lot of stacks right now. Like, they've left the Alchemist solo, who's got 20 last hits. So they've got to try and... If Chalice can catch up, which he should with all the stacks they've made. But the issue is, is that all their lanes are behind. Like, Els isn't a good laner. They lost mid as well. Bot's the only one that's kind of going even. But the, the issue is, is that... I mean, Nog is free farming. And and because of this, I, I think the Alchemist had to... They had a very small window where Elk has to hit this big timing before the Alchemist gets items. Stack this? What? He just ran past it. Okay. Uh, you've got a small window where Elk is going to have to come online before the Naga. And because he's not having a good start and Naga is literally free farming. And Naga kind of relies on levels. Like once you get Riptide and your Illusions max out, you see how fast he's able to just kill the other creeps. Your items Manta Diffusal is when he's able to kind of get active across the map. But definitely, the 404 is where you just flash farm to Oblivion. Okay. Gonna try and snipe the Corio? Nope. So X Nova, he will be in trouble here. They're gonna wrap on him. Should reveal there's a ward on the high ground, potentially. Looks like he will end up dropping. Actually, how'd they get the Viz? Yeah. No, so they saw him run through with it. Nicely done there. And now they're just gonna continue hunting. And they've still... So they did deward the... Uh, that was a ward up here before. Looks like they did place two sentries, though, unfortunately. So, I mean, Felix just eating some of uh, the experience right now. Next over is going to be forced to rotate to try and help out as Somnus is almost going to end up dropping as well. Somnus is going to be really careful. He doesn't have mana with the one, so Somnus is able to do this, but 
Does he have enough for Spike? That's the question. He does. Summoners doesn't use the torrent just yet. We'll drag him back afterwards. They're stacking up the poison. It looks like this will enable them to find the kill. Somnus also gets it as well, which is important. That's actually really, really nice. The fact that you know, this hero is needing as much catch-up as he's able to get. So any little chunk of gold is going to work in their favor right now. But he's still got these stacks trying to play around with here. Chell is just going to go back and forth. But the Naga is going to start taking them. They got to, He's got to clear these stacks fast. Otherwise, SAG, I want to see them infiltrate the jungle. Looks like they're going to try and take top. And then once they get top, it's going to open up. They can kind of make the movement through the uh, through the outpost for Dyer. TP is going to come through from old 11 for the Rolling Thunder. DK is incredibly tanky. Has four points up in the passive right now, X Nova. Still only one point in the poison as well. So with the six charges, wasn't enough to find the dragon out. And now old 11, the Rolling Thunder has worn off. OP finds a stun with a connection. He does have the swashbuckle available. But now with the impale coming through from Felix, chain locks the Pangali long enough for them to find the damage to bring him down sag doing an incredible job and uh, ugh, this is not good uh, let's see i mean we're not really going to be able to see how many illusions sorry how much mutual creeps is able to take away the thing is you take uh, there's, uh, if he actually loses his stack this game's over i mean i think it already is or it already but they're just infiltrating. They lose the T1 tower mid. Chell's just going to go for a straight TP out. He doesn't have the skill point available for the ensnare, but I, I'm i going to call it. This game is well and truly over. I don't see how they come back. They've lost the T1 tower mid. They're going to lose top as well. Radiant have a lineup where DK and Hoskar can just start man fighting down objectives. And unfortunately, the conquer, last, the conquer last pick for LGD, at least, that ninth pick, they get the matchup versus the Hoskar. They're going to try and man fight here inside the river, but it's not going to work out in their favor. I mean, Hoskar, oh, tiebreaker from Somnus. Finds a kill, actually. Okay. They're going to try and find Felix as well. The stun's only on to the Grimstroke. One more right click. He does have the one charge, so he's able to stay alive. They still don't have the level sixes just yet. Felix is level two, actually. So you see how much emphasis the Nyx has been putting onto the lanes. Trying to really find these camps. And now FY... With that ink swell, still has Somnus on the back line. Has to play pretty defensive because he doesn't have a whole lot of health. So it looks like it's just up to FY. The slow coming through from the Vortex. One more right click though. Secures the kill. Did I speak too soon? I did say that Die the Spirit Vessel was their timing. So maybe if they... It is, they're getting it really late though. And now OP. Is able to stop the outpost control here. So Radiant. Not able to get both of them, unfortunately. OP. Never. In a bit of a tricky spot, Old Eleven's going to be able to bounce back and forth with the cliffs. Chain locking down the Dragon Knights. So OP unable to really do anything here. Won't have any movements. Just making as much space across the map as possible. It is a, he's a beefy boy. I'm not going to lie. Somehow he is still alive. Like now this is a lot of space because Radiant, they're going to rotate over. Red Panda Felix will show up. <laughs> it's a double kill for Red Panda. What is happening? They find three LGD. They might even lose Chelsea as well. I, I was honestly like... DK is going to die here. Like, I know he's going to die. He's just making space. And then all of a sudden, Radiant, they just bring the boys. I wasn't paying any attention to the map. And Elk's going Battle Fury. Oh, this... Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, this is rough. And Naga's even going for... Was that the Diffusal? No, Yash, I was going to say. I didn't think he'd go Diffusal. Was that... I thought I saw another Blade of Alacrity. <laughs> Only level 4 on Felix. He's done a really good job, though. Just scouting out the stacks, giving him a lot of vision as well. I said that the, the Nyx... Because the Shadow Demon is... You see Xnova's only level 3 as well. And they are just so far... But a 7,000 net worth lead for SAG. It's an 8,000 up to now. But the experience as well is neck and neck. And this is kind of the issue. Is that the position... So Xnova and Nyx... Just constantly mirroring the movements from each other. Old Eleven did also go Javelin. So I thought they were going to lack a little bit of damage. Because the Conquer was going Spirit Vessel. I wasn't sure if Pango would go for like the Maelstrom to kind of deal with the Illusions. Or if he was just going to go the, the Vlads. Because of how incredibly strong it is actually with the Pango. Like you get the life still with that Swashbuckle. But really fine. Here's the Grimstroke. We'll use the Ice Blast to secure the kill there in the meantime. This is just... I mean, OP's got a blink already. Now, Felix, they'll hunt down Somnus. 
I need the follow-up stun. Looks like with the Dragon Tail coming up in a couple of seconds here, it should enable them to find it. They don't want to dive the tower, however. It's, it is a difficult kill if Somnus is able to get that boat off fast enough, but... I mean, Naga is just taking over the jungle right now, away from Dyer, and Chelus, he has committed for the Battle Fury. So... Okay. I still seem... I'm seeing a decent amount of Alchemists lately in, like, C region a lot. Uh, and it seems like they are still going for the Radiant, so this Battle Fury is kind of interesting. I wonder if he goes for the Cleave then at level 20, but... I guess he feels like he's just not going to be able to get the Radiance. So it's still going to be able to give him a whole lot of farm here. Wonder if he does go Manta then as that second item. He's going to have to adapt. You know, because they were starting to infiltrate the jungle, the Beef Fury is a lot easier to pick up because it has the more cost-effective components in that regard. But far out, that probability is really scary. 98%. Oof. Yeah, that's some scary stuff right there. I mean, SAG just, you know, finding the farm. All three cores, one, two, three in the net worth at the moment. Somnus still without this spirit vessel completed as well. So their kill potential onto the DK, onto the Hoskar just is not prevalent. And now there's also a BKB on the Hoskar. So he's got a way to be able to dispel off the spirit vessel. Doesn't have to worry about the magic damage from LGD. You know, things are looking really good for SAG. They're, they're getting everything they need. And the fact that I, any Alchemist lineup, if you are behind in net worth, it just shows. Alchemist is a hero that needs to be like a, an item and, and a half above, maybe even like two items. So if the net... Oh, Somnus. I mean, he's, gonna, he's using the boat on illusions right now. You see how much damage they're doing. Felix almost find that Spike Carapace done. He will catch out the Conquer. A little bit of vision is going to come through. Somnus doesn't have any protection though because the rest of Radiant actually cutting out the re reinforcements. So Somnus... Try and utilize the fast movement speed. It's only Felix chasing, but still OP on the high ground. We'll be able to catch him out here. Beautifully done. I love what Radiant did there. You saw the rest of the team literally just beeline straight to that tier 2 talents if there were any reinforcements, and they were not. Unfortunately, Somnus pays the price there. You see what the Naga Illusion is able to do already. OP? I'm not going to be able to find anyone here, so. Just getting more map control. More towers going to end up dropping. Elk does have this Battle Fury now completed. Let's see how what they're able to do as we see Felix. They should be fine. Radiant, they're going to beeline it to bot. So DD went for a lot more of a defensive build. I'm actually kind of surprised he went BKB first considering. I guess you know the Conker's rushing. Ooh, all 11. They're going to try and fight around the bounty, but they do get the stun before the ultimate coming through for the Pangolin. So he's going to get melted. Beautifully done from SAG. Oh, just another fight by the bounty. They only catch one. Uh, sorry, x Nova does get another, so it will be two. And Chelos, he's already has that Ogre Axe as well with a couple of bounties there, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, this is getting difficult. Yeah, 9,000 net worth lead now, and... What I was speaking about before, the Hoskar BKB is interesting because I guess it's, you, you know the Conker's going for a Spirit Vessel, so I guess you want the BKB early to be able to dispel that in the meantime, but Soulbind's out, doesn't latch on anyone at the moment, they're going to try and find OP, this hero is goddamn tanky as anything, but it looks like with all the reinforcements that come through from LGD, do they have the damage just yet, they're able to get the breed fire out, and now with the disruption as well, holds him onto the back line here, gives him a little bit of protection, but the song... God King catches out four. They've already used a couple of the ultimates here, so there's no more follow-up. They'll find the Grimstroke on the back line. It's Nan's going to catch out Old Eleven as well. Swashbuckle's on cooldown. We'll be up in a couple seconds, so it looks like Old Eleven stays alive, but the rest of PSG LGD chase down behind the Tier 1 tower. Really nice TP coming through. The song just allowing them to reset, even though they didn't have any more big ulti follow-ups. It's more the fact that they're able to find the reset button. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. But hey! Elk's farm and baby! Let's go! Chalice is top of the net worth. Woo! I mean, he's, he's getting farmed. He's going to have a BKB pretty soon, but I don't think this is uh, enough, unfortunately, with them 10,000 gold behind. I mean, you take a look at the net worth on the Pango and the Conquer. They've had to play more of a sacrificial lamb. 
and yeah, I mean, this game's so grim right now. Not even pun attended as we're clicked on the grim stroke, but has Somnus got spirit vessel? Oof. <laughs> Oh, god damn. I mean, Spirit Vessel's gonna do absolutely nothing now. As long as uh, Husker holds his BKB. Even then, they can probably even end the fight with that full 10 second BKB charge. It's 9 now, I use a dump bot. Alright, so we do have a BKB onto the Alchemist here. This is now just the win condition from PSGL GD, but SAG are walking to Roche. They've got... Wait, they are melting through it. The Burning Spears does actually so much damage. It's nuts. Look how, look how fast they actually take this. Like, once you get the stacks coming through, Roche just does not stand a chance. And the first Aegis on Huskar, usually it's the one where you get all the outer towers. You just want to try and get farm as much map control as possible, suffocate the enemy team inside the base, and just slowly gain this net worth lead while, that, while you wait for the second Roche to respawn. But SAG... They're going to make a fast movement here. Haskar hasted up. Xnova's going to try and TP out. They will find the stun, however, from OP. Already in that Elder Dragon form, so with range. And, I mean, looks like, hey, they do have Spirit Vessel now completed. The only issue is, is that Somnus is going to have to try and find some charges somewhere. Because right now, I mean, Radiant feel like they've got a lineup that might not actually die, which is a little scary. We'll see. I mean, it's all Hopus. Where's that Carap? Who did Carapus? Oh, but I think the Elk just TP'd out. Yeah, he did. He was just out of there. I mean, Naga's... No Diffusal Blade Naga? That's a really interesting choice, actually. Maybe because you're going into the Shadow Demon, you want don't want that Diffusal. I wonder if that's the case. Another Soul Bind mid. Ice Ball's going to come through the double concussion as well. It is a lot of damage here. Okay. There comes the own charges. OP's going to pop the BKB coming from the protection of the song. Allows him to get that item off on the back line. Old 11. So we're going to try and close the distance here. DK is able to find the blink to disengage. Kuro stays alive as well. So they do find a kill. They get some Spirit Vessel charges, baby. Let's go. OGD, come back. Oh, yeah. First kill. In a long time. What did they use there? Not a BKB. I don't... Th yeah, he didn't BKB. It'd still be on cooldown. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. That's a good way to start. It's a kill on a support here. But they're going to lose two bounties down bot. Let's see if they get both the ones top though. They have a scan. They do not. But it looks like just with the X. That's a nice play. Still get two bounties. See, Alchemist now has this Shadow Blade completed. And what is the item, though, for Chellis? Like, I'm actually... I think you go... I wonder if he goes AC next. He might actually just have to go damage, though. Like, AC increase your tankiness. Hmm. The only reason I bring up AC is because there's a lot of... I mean, the minus armor from the Naga. I think you're going to need it as well. Old 11. That's a very aggressive swashbuckle. Oscar still has his Aegis, BKB to play around as well. Ice Blast off the mark. Chelsea's going to try and find the backline supports here. Now DD with the BKB pop. Chelsea's going to pop his own as well. Straight on top of Felix. We'll be able to get the Vendetta off. Not in down the, the tower range. So they don't have the detection coming through. But now with the Soul Bind. Latches on the Huskull. They'll find the Dragonite as well. Chelsea's BKB is going to wear off. They deal with the first life here. But now Alchemist is going to be careful. The ultimate's about to expire here. And the Cold Feet proc comes through. Dead for 50 seconds. They honestly might just call it here. With no buyback available from the Alchemist, that first BKB duration had to be the one to actually turn away this gameplay. And unfortunately, it's not. X Nova's going to call the G's. And a 21 mi minute victory coming through from Sparking Arrow. You, you could tell this game was, was over from a mile away. When you. Elk is not going to. Like, Alchemist is a hero that does not do well in the lane like he needs to just do even which he kind of did i'd say even is kind of you know farming up with the dk so dk did win that lane like dk out farmed you know elk was able to catch up with the stacks but the issue is is that nyx gave them a lot of information from scouting out those stacks 
it allowed them to infiltrate take the experience take a lot of the gold as well when naga started to join up and yeah you just lose mid you lose top but I, they lost all their lanes you know that's it they lost all their lanes maybe you can say some if you want to be generous you can say somewhat even but when you lose all your lanes as an alchemist that hero then loses towers and he can't find you're here that needs to farm for like 15 minutes and get like two items ahead of everyone and you know when you're that far behind in in net worth like they they didn't have an advantage as an alchemist you're supposed to have that advantage you know you're supposed to be the ones with that net worth inflated because of the hero and that's not the case um so lgd they try something unfortunately it's just not going to work for them again look at the stacks x nova 6 fy2 they, they made a lot of stacks to try and put emphasas on the alchemist unfortunately it just did not work this game sag they're gonna force a game three here ladies and gentlemen so let's see you know it has been one better with the in the cda the china dota association sparking arrow gaming were able to 2-0 lgd in their last matchup and it looks like in this matchup they're gonna do a little bit better though so we're going to have this full best of three. It'll go the distance, LGD. See if they're going to be able to get a little bit of revenge from their last series. Take a quick break. Shouldn't be too long. About 10 minutes.